Hey, good evening. So my wife designed that lovely intro. It's pretty cool. Dancing across the universe. <laughs> it's a pretty cool visual. I hope you're all doing well tonight. I um, understand that no one's probably going to be on yet. Let's get a comments. Make sure I'm ready for that. Shalom. Blessings to you and your family. I hope you're all doing well during this extremely strange time that we're in. <laughs> so I was talking about and planning on talking about in between like doing readings and such, if we have the demand, uh, about, you know, your inner child. Falling in love with your inner child, maybe back in love with your inner child. I know uh, a lot of us are doing some very serious adulting and uh, that can sometimes get in the way of uh, our spiritual expression and such. So I'd encourage you to uh, embrace your inner child, find a way of bringing out, you know, the fun, you know, having fun and finding those places of adventure and imagination. It's uh, playing a board game with friends or family and, you know, cards, spiritual cards, connection. I'll do some cards. Uh, you know, they're touchstones uh, for an in intuitive reading. Uh, that's one of the ways I move. I also uh, have some pendulums, which are kind of cool. They're yes or no stuff. And you can look back in the Bible. It talks about the ephah. And the ephah was yes or no. Two stones on the back of a high priest's chest plate. And I just bring that up because a lot of people will get stuck on divination or, you know, pendulums or whatever. Man. I'm a little child. These are toys. These are tools, tools and toys, you know? So it's all good. It's all good. I hope you're finding yourself well tonight. Social distancing and all. I have my own opinions about some of that. Social distancing completely makes sense, and especially not really having all the mass gatherings and such for a bit. But I think we're... We're, we're past that to a point and, and those people that are still vulnerable stay and, and dwell where they're at and everybody else kind of get back to life. The interesting thing about this, though, is, has stirred some people back to their inner child. You know, they've been doing the same job and such for so long or maybe just not really appreciating where they're at and want something different. And guess what? <laughs> it just kind of came on. It's happening. Right now, something different is happening, something new, something exciting. Yes, it's nerve-wracking and and waiting for monies and, and not knowing necessarily. Maybe suspicious about some things. And some people have moved on already and really started their new thing. I've started mine. I plan on staying in this expression. <laughs> and, uh, you know, just... Trying to hang out with my inner child. I want to hang out with my the little Patrick. <laughs> right? Have some fun. You know, I used to do stuff, crazy stuff. I'll go up to people in the stores and pray for their knees and such. And yeah, people healed with that too, you know. <clears throat> and um, I believe and know really it was because of that childlike faith, you know, just really caring about the people caring enough to get over my own ego, right? The, the flesh, ah, the flesh. It can really hold a person back. And, uh, but you know what? Finding that inner child and the, the playfulness, and the, the sincereness of being uh, childlike really takes you to deep places in the spirit. In fact, Jesus says you can't even get in the kingdom of God unless you become as one of these children. And uh, I'm pretty sure there was no metaphor about that allegory about it. It's pretty simple. And the letters in red is what they say. And uh, so what do you do with that? You know, what's practical application of that? So hopefully we get some people that come in here soon. If you're watching on Facebook or my YouTube, Patrick Holmes Sozo. My YouTube, Patrick Holmes Sozo. I'm 
Facebook, I think it's Healing Wellness Modalities or Patrick Wellness. Uh, a couple places you can reach out to me if you have questions, if you want a reading um, and such. I'm going to do some free readings tonight if the opportunity arises. And uh, had some wonderful experiences on the radio today with Roxy. Uh, five, six different people from different places around the country called in and uh, just very profound experience. It's really cool. You know what can happen if you make yourself available. If you, you know, I don't see myself as uh, as the way some people see me and, and such. And so to step out on a radio show for me, even though I'm kind of type A and, you know, I've done master ceremonies for a long time since I was in high school and before even middle school, whatever. Well, it goes back a long time. I've been doing public engagement, you know, entertaining, playing music, speaking, teaching. And so to get in front of people doesn't bother me. But when you step out on a limb spiritually and people are asking for help or, you know, asking for readings and such, you know, it takes, it, you know, it takes that sincere childlike faith to expect that I could possibly be used in such a way. So, and I believe I can, and I, I am used in such a way. Um, you know, one of the ladies today uh, had a question about relationship and she wouldn't let on that she was in it. She kind of, yeah. But by the end of that reading, she had extreme clarity of what she needed to do. And the decision, uh, it was just a confirmation. She already knew and they're in love and, and it's all moving forward. So it was pretty cool to see that happen. Or I should say it was radio, so I didn't see anything. I, did in my mind's eye, so to speak, <laughs> but I heard, and uh, it was a re very special time. So, we are waiting and just learning, learning to accept things. I mean, there's a lot of stuff going on and being opposed on us as individuals and as group. You know, uh, thinking about buttoning my shirt a little more. I like my shirt. Italian silk. We got it in like a hog shop. Thing, you know? Not a hog shop, but a secondhand store. It's nice. I log it. Oh, I'm the second hand. It's not going to a third because I log it too much. I log my shit. I did say shit. I did not say something else that sounds like shit. <laughs> so, my wife, uh, Design that beautiful intro. I think we still have to do an extra, an exit, but I think I could probably click it on the way out. Click it. I have to have a handler. My wife is my handler. She does all my PR work. <laughs> I'm a little spoiled in that area. But she's uh, already put in a lot of time doing this stuff. And I've been in the background, you know, doing the jobs I had to do and such. And now I get to step kind of in to some of the fruit. Her fruit, I get to step into her fruit. Hey. She has very nice fruit. <laughs> yeah, we're going on 32 years. So we're really fruity, we're fruity people. So that being said, all in there, let's see. What shall we do? I was kind of hoping to have somebody. Oh, my, maybe we will, little wifey. Maybe I'll give her some cards. Let's do some cards for Tony. Yes. Mm. <gasps> Whoa. Hey, man. All right. So, we're going to do some. Cards for Tony. This free reading night, April twenty third. Unless you're in Australia, then it's twenty fourth and a half. I don't know. It's a day and a half. I don't think it's like Friday there in Australia. <laughs> and then my friends down in New Zealand, Australia, the UK, Ireland, and such. 
So apparently you're going to see this later because you're not here all now. <laughs> all right, here we go. This is for Tony. And the first card we have for you, Tanoni, we're going to do the Tanoni, Tanoni. I'm just renaming my wife to Tanoni. It's Ten of Swords. Okay, so ten is kind of a governmental number and such. It says despair, sad, powerless, and depressed. So this is like a past kind of thing, right? So real pretty card, Ten of Swords. If I can get it to where it's not glaring so much, and moon faced and tenant. There we go. Anyway, you know we think with words like that. It might be kind of a depressing card, but this is a past card. This is things gone by. The feeling of being powerless, depressed, sad, and despair. Just acknowledging and accepting some of those things that have happened. So it's a good card. It means things are coming into order. The Ten of Swords. All right. Yes. In fact, we could do something rare and unusual for myself. And then we could actually look up what the book says about the Ten of Swords. I don't generally go off the book because I usually have someone on with me. And here we are. So it says you need to put on your reading glasses. And I'm like, really? Why would they put that in the book? All right. You have let yourself fall into the trap of self-depreciation and lack of self-worth. You've let others take the lead, sacrificing your goals and putting your needs at the bottom of the list. You are feeling depressed and wondering why life keeps pushing you down. But to be honest, you have allowed this to happen. You do not love or respect yourself enough to put yourself first. So how can you expect others to do so? Gather what energy you have left and start loving and nurturing the person who is most important in your life. You give yourself a pat on the back. There you go. I'm on your back. And for getting this far, be proud. Step up to the plate and take what you need to get past this stage. You can do it. You just have to believe in you. So that's what the book says about that card. Though I know my wife and she loves herself. So that's why I like going off individually for the cards the book gives kind of a general idea of what the author of the cards wanted to say but that doesn't necessarily mean uh it's it's everything that the card's saying the cards say a lot the cards you know it's not just the words i mean you have the swords and the fire and the numbering numbering is very powerful if i can get it <laughs> so that's past thing now we have a present and we're staying in the swords and if i can get light and i blinded myself all right reading glasses are apparently necessary tonight so i can't see it all right. Secrecy, flee, conceal, leaving. Interesting because someone's been looking a lot at some forms of travel and new new homes and all kinds of stuff. So that's, you know, that's pretty cool. Very cool. I know that this, that secrecy, flee, like to run away, conceal, leaving. Seven, completion. So whatever has happened is completed as of now. And the sword's cutting through. It's an offensive weapon and a defensive weapon, but a sword is generally more offensive, though it can be used as a shield and such. But when you have seven swords, look out, and the fire... And the eye in the middle there. It's like the eye of the universe. So that is good. Now we'll do a future card. One just popped out. 
So let's see what we are. We have a five of wands, rival, debate, hassle, and argument. Oh, that sucks. <laughs> so there's some movement happening. There's some friction happening. But, you know, it's fertilizer for the future. Uh, that's how you got to take that change. Giving birth to something new. You know, birth, birthing can not be a very pretty sight sometimes. I mean, it's beautiful and the, the idea, but really, I mean, the screaming. Five of wands, yes. No, you're right. And five. Five for change. Wands being a touchstone of power. That's good. That's good. It's all good. Even when it appears something is negative, it's there just to draw our attention to it and Acknowledge it. As soon as we acknowledge it, it dissipates. So. That's right. Okay. All right. We'll hang out a little bit longer. If we don't have some people participating here pretty soon, I'll probably call it a night. I don't see anybody. Oh, they're just watching. Okay. Well, come on in the room. Yeah, come and get free card reading. Not just one, I'll do three. Past, present, future. If you have a pendulum question, yes or no. I will do that for you. I will. And uh, damn cameraman. That's me. That's me on the cameraman. Okay. Anyway, bless the cameraman. Yes, bless you, cameraman. Where's your net? It is Thursday night. I was on the radio earlier. Very entertaining time. It's warm as so. It's pushing down. Probably in the 80s right now. And it's like going on 9:30 here. In Arizona, surprise. Yeah. Mm. So, lot of strange and unusual things going on. Sometimes we're just trying to figure out where we fit into all of this. And if you have an anxiety and such, I think I can give you a little life hack right now. I love to use it. There's a Hebrew legend about the first breath of man or Adam. And it's in Yah, and then you exhale away is the name of God. So when you take a breath in, you say, Yah, way. You can breathe in Yah a little slower. That kind of gives you, could settle you. Do that at least three times. And you can continue to do that until you just feel better. It will help. Maybe uh, tune into my wife's channel. She's got some singing bulls. In fact, if there's something like opening up your third eye, she does a third eye entombment. How long does your entombment last? Is it an hour? It's about an hour long with the bulls and light language. And it's a very profound experience. So Tony the Global Healer. And uh, she can tune you up, so to speak. Get your third eye operating and active. And if it is, she can make it more. She, 
she's really a medium's medium. She ministers to a lot of different gifted and special people that have come to her. And that's not an arrogant thing. She's humble enough. You know, she's, it's some of the people, you know, she helps and it's, it can be intimidating. <laughs> so, cause the personalities and such, but, uh, she's got some very powerful entombments. So that's something that you want some help with. Check that out, man. And we can do some hypno uh, regressions, uh, transpersonal hypnotherapy, and, and really connect you more with your third eye and work on your vis visualization stuff. I have a client right now I'm working, and we can run through colors. You know, when I started down this road of, of praying and, and visualization stuff, I, I had a difficult time really seeing, right? And it's something you have to can reconnect. We lose. Like as a child, you have that. Come back to being in love with your inner child, allowing that child to come forward, trusting in what you see, hear, smell, taste. And all those are different gateways that you can receive spiritual information from. Hi, Deborah. Where you where are you at, Deborah? That's fine. Is it California, Deborah? Would you lock some cards, Deborah? I'm not so sure if I'm digging my light tonight. I seem to be a little bit of COVID fat going on. <laughs> Getting a little healthier in my face. Healthy, healthy face. <laughs> Sunny California, right on. So Deborah, or should I say Deborah? Is it Deborah? And that's a Deborah. Sounds better than Deborah. Deborah. You're in a child, Deborah. So you want some cards? You want to play with some cards, Deborah? Southern Cali Banning. Southern Cali Banning. Ban oh, yeah, Banning. Gotcha. <laughs> yeah, I know what I'm doing. I don't know where that's at. Yeah. All right, so you're west from us. You're west side, Deborah. All right, so cards, yeah or nay? Yes. Affirmative, Deborah. We'd launch some cards as soon as possible, please. All right. Let's do that. Let me shuffle for Deborah. This is for Deborah. Professional shuffler. Actually, I'm the amateur. Sounds pretty cool. It sounds like I could go professional. I thought about going professional as a shuffler. <laughs> oh, thank you, Deborah. All right. This is for Deborah. We're going to do a past, present, future thing for my sister. And we have past card up. The Nine of Swords, okay, worry, regret, anxiety, and troubles. This has something to do with past stuff, past stuff, Deborah. Does that make sense to you? Go ahead and put in the comments. You don't have to be specific. The Nine, number of giving birth. So that, to me, says Deborah, that you were in a gestation time. You're growing in the womb, so to speak, and you're coming to a point uh, of giving birth. You're coming out of worry, coming out of regret, coming out of anxiety, and goodbye to troubles. Does that make sense, Deborah? Let me know. Let me know, please. Spot on. Spot on. Uh, 
Chippy. I just, I'm working on my Australian English thing. Irony is that, you know, I have a lot of Irish, I guess, in me, and I can't do an Irish accent. You put a gun in my head, it ain't going to happen. I can't do it. <laughs> it's, 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 I'm going to go hang out in Ireland sometime just so I can acquire an accent. <laughs> All right. So now we're going to do a present card. So that was your past card. That's stuff that's done fading and faded. Your, your number nine birth coming down the canal and we have present day oh nine of cups deborah nine of cups i gotta put on my reading glasses it's like my eyes are coming and going getting old wish desire oh luxury content or should i say contentment nine of cups a lot of vessels another nine that's two nines I would start to pay attention to that. Wishes coming true, desires, some luxury. Come on. <laughs> Come on, Deborah. Luxury, luxury. And the last one is content. You're gonna, you're in a place. If you're not there yet, you're gonna be there. And I mean soon. Set. Nine of cups, a lot of vessels for holding that new wine, right? The intoxicating, the intoxicating ability of life to give you joy. All those cups. Look at the flames in those cups. This is beautiful. Nine of cups, Deborah. This is where you're at. You were one place. Now you're here. Now let's take a look at a future card. Does that make sense? I hope it makes sense for Deborah in the sunny California. And for a future card, am I gonna need my glasses? Drum roll, please. Ace of Pentacles. All right. Oh, come on. This is awesome, Deborah. Promotion, reward. It hey, flat out says money, <laughs> security, new opportunity. Come on, Deborah. That's a beautiful card. That's a lot of hope. Faith is the substance of things hoped for, right? And the evidence of things not yet seen. The evidence. I'm giving you a hint. Where's the evidence? Where's, where is it? Where is the evidence? Promotion. Hey, Ace of Pentacles. You got a promotion coming, a reward coming, money coming, security coming, new opportunity. All right. So intention, okay, Deborah, can be put in place of faith, intention. Is the substance of things hoped for? You're here, the nine of cups, the wishes, the desires. What are you wishing for? What are you desiring? Move towards those things. Luxury and contentment. Yes, it's in my hand. It's right there. That's the substance. That's part of it. It's part of the manifestation. It should just be affirming to you. I hope that's exactly what it is. So you came out of worry. In this past card, nine of swords. Cut your way out. Regret, anxiety, and troubles. The number nine. First show of number nine. Second was the nine of cups. And it says cups underneath my fat finger. Anyway, Nine of Cups, that's where you're at. Your wishes, what are you wishing for, desiring? There'll be luxury and contentment. And the future, promotion, reward, 
money, security, and new opportunity, beautiful sacred geometry, wheels within the wheels, the sign of the atom, the flower of life. Shalom, Deborah. Shalom. Thank you for participating. I hope that blesses you. Tell your friends, I got a uh, copy of the radio show is going to be posted on the YouTube at uh, some point as we figure that out. I dug from deep down to reach top. Yes. Sometimes we have to go down, you know, go low to go high. Right? God draws near the humble and he resists the proud is what it's written in the word. And there's a lot of truth to that. You know, you see haughty people and you're like, man, why do they keep me on? But self-confidence is good. It's not telling you not to be confident in who you are. I appreciate you too, Deborah. And be the change you want to see, right? So, you know, tell someone that, that might not need to hear something good, you know. So go see that Patrick on Sozo. He's crazy. <laughs> all right. Yeah, it's all in the little things. We just do what we can do. I showed up tonight. That that was my biggest thing is, is to get in front of the camera. We were really excited to try out the intro. If you did not watch it, I, I encourage you. It might be a little long, but you know, it's informative. <laughs> I like it's pretty. Starts out with the person dancing across the universe. Uh, I thought that was cool. Tony designed all that. She came up with it all. My little angel. And uh, so today we had a donut fit. <laughs> We started calling around the donut shops because we wanted a donut, you know, but it's like three o'clock in the afternoon. Tony seen something on Facebook, this local donut shop. They have bacon maple donuts. Oh my God. Well, they were sold out. So I'm like, oh, okay, okay. There's more donut shops. <laughs> so we started calling donut shops. And, no, sorry, we sold out everything. And there's actually a couple Asian donut shops, which uh, was interesting. I never even figured, you know, that. And they're all out to tomorrow. And it's like every single one. Well, finally, I, you know, Dunkin' Donuts don't even answer their phone. <laughs> so I went to Dunkin' Donuts. I figured I had a pretty good chance of scoring a donut at Dunkin's. And I did. They didn't have maple bars. <laughs> and I did have chocolate covered ones, really tender chocolate glazed donuts. And then these kind of uh, glazed cinnamon things with not really cinnamon in them. I'm not even sure if it's got cinnamon in it, but they're good. So I got, you know, a couple of those. But that wasn't good enough because I want a maple bar. So I went to another store. <laughs> a major brand, a grocery store, and made the trip in the back, and there was one box of assorted donuts for almost the same cost as I paid for four donuts. I got 12 donuts, and they were just as fresh, actually. And there was a maple bar, and there was even like a maple ring. You know, it was maple. It was really good. My inner child was very happy. And so was Tony's. We scratched that itch. Yeah, donuts. Now you're all going to have tomorrow morning. I'm tempted to set my alarm so I can go and get the infamous maple bacon bear claw thing. Ah, oh, God, if you've seen the picture, it's like food porno. It's bad. It's food porno. Ah, oh, man. So, of course, we had to follow donuts up with what? You know, maybe some more bread. So we had Little Caesars. Oh, 
was so good. Okay, so we got to spend the next week fasting and, and such, but you know, it's good to treat yourself. It was good. It was fun food. Fun food. We have deep fried Oreos at my <laughs> Oh, my goodness. With some heavy cream, maybe like cold, heavy cream. If you want to get really rich, to like wash down the, what is it? Uh, deep fried Oreos. Oh, yeah. I could, I could see that. Or, or just have them on like some nice French vanilla ice cream. Yeah. That'd be good. We have pumpkin tarts. We put fresh cream. Oh. <laughs> now you just that's that sounds really good. The pumpkin tarts with some bacon on it. I you know I can't help it. I'm a carnivore. We're gonna say yeah. I see a lot of people. They're going to vegan, and that's actually a good idea. In fact, you don't have to stay vegan or vegan. And there's a difference between those two. But it's it's. Unless you choose to, and I don't judge you for that. That's more meat for me. <laughs> so, I put no judgment there. You go eat the grass, and it's good for you, especially if you take like a 90 day uh, time frame or, or something to that degree and give yourself, give your body a break away from uh, some meats. You know, some people, though, oddly enough, fare very well on just meat. There's been uh, a number of anecdotal cases that uh, I've read about. One was a cardiologist, actually, an older gentleman, and uh, jumped in Trino Cape. Uh, oh, what's going on over here? Hold on a second. Yeah. Yes, dipped in funnel cake batter. Oh, <laughs> yeah. I don't think I'd ever get to your main. I eat dessert first. Most of the time, I'll order my dessert first. <laughs> so I don't think I'd ever see your entrees, Deborah. If I went to the restaurant, because I'd be like, oh, I have this now. I got to have some meat with my sugar. So I definitely would get something. But um, what's the what's the like cuisine? Is it like Italian? Is it uh, French, Hispanic, Asian, Yugoslavian? Uh, we got some friends from over by Croatia, uh, the, the, oh, Bosnia. Bosnia, and oh, they make some good food. They have a cabbage they pickle. You know, they pickle the cabbages, a hell of a cabbage, and then they take the leaves and they wrap uh, a lamb mixture in, the, you know, lamb and, and, and herbs and stuff, and then they bake that. Oh, the pickled leaves, you know, it's like the fermented. Cabbage is so good. It's got this tang and stuff. Very good. Ah, oh, talking about food. Oh my goodness. All right, I ate tonight. If I see you hungry again, because I'm like self hypnotizing myself into eating more, then I'm gonna pig out. I guarantee it. <laughs> go big or go home. That's my my phrase. And I am home. Yeah, it might as well just go big anyway. So I hope you like my picture. That's, that's, that's my picture. It's not my wife's picture. This is this is, this is mine. Pick that out. I did give it to my wife and she rejected it. No, I'm just kidding. She's got other things, banners, and she's got the green screen and all kinds of stuff. Everything home cooked from scratch. Our restaurant is called Country Junction. Oh! Oh, made biscuits and gravy. <sighs> yeah. Yeah, I got some fond memories of a place similar to that over in like Austin, Texas. We'd go to Blue Bonnet or something like that. It's not in Austin. It's west west of Austin and one of the other little communities. And they, they're like that. Man. They make their pies and everything. And, a retreat we go over there once in a while oh there what, what is it chicken fried steak and oh my goodness all that stuff really good all home cooked locally harvested stuff meats and, and uh, vegetables lots of farmland around there yeah it's pretty cool deborah french made honda oh yeah oh yeah yeah my wife has an angel wing banner She's pro. I just had a flower. 
It's my flower. Oh, cameras. Anyway. If I don't have my glasses left. <laughs> Every once in a while, I get caught. If I don't have my glasses, it's like. And the irony is, I wear contacts because I'm actually nearsighted. So when I put on my contacts, I have to wear reading glasses. And I, about, I grew up wanting to get away from glasses. <laughs> but actually, I like glasses. I'll probably get myself a pair of glasses so I don't have to wear my contacts so, so religiously. All is fresh. Oh, yeah. Chorizo, yes. All that stuff. Fresh meats probably from the local farms and such. That's what California is really good with all that. And it's good to eat local, you know, local produce, local meats, if you can support the local guy. And it's really sad. And, and one of the things, though, that's good about what's going on in the sense of waking people up on how much stuff we order from China, because the place I used to wor work as an assisted living facility uh, ordered their food from China. And all of it, green bean casseroles, all of it. You don't even know what the hell they really put in that stuff. You know, and here, and because of the cost and their profit margin, because believe me, assisted living facilities are a business. You know, so, so this is cut into their profits pretty severely, I guarantee you, because they're not getting their food from China right now. And that's a good thing because those people deserve better. You know, there's no reason they can't find a local harvest, you know, local farms uh, to supply these these uh, assisted living and nursing homes and such. If anybody needs it, they do, you know, to have that organic food um, without the chemicals and such. Oh, Tony is amazing. I married up. I can lie. You don't have to guess just by looking at me. I got a wild squirrel on my face. I mean, come on. Very tame, though. Tame. Good scroll. Yeah. <coughs> See me? Gatorade. A little mineral water. I love it. Mixing my drinks. Mixed drinks. Gatorade and mineral water and some lemonade. It's, it's good. It's good. I'm going to add some Russian water to that in a little bit. Could happen. I hear it's raining in Russia. We don't want them to drown after all. Oh, organic is best, yes. But just, you know, eating greens and such like that, you know, getting the body pH, you know, obviously the stuff we had, the processed sugar and um, the pizza bread and that stuff is, is very acidic. So we counter that with the mineral waters and, and eating and drinking stuff that'll neutralize the acidic effect on the body and you know give it more healing and, and that kind of stuff you know food can affect your mood food can affect the mood it's a symbiotic relationship your body and your autonomic nervous system for example you know they say that 95 percent of your life is lived subconsciously <coughs> excuse me out of your subconscious to give you give you an example of that picture a lemon it's not COVID. That's something down the wrong view. <coughs> Sorry. Come back to that. Sorry about that. A little bit of a throat spasm thing going on. <laughs> <clears throat> My goodness. <clears throat> uh, 
a little phlegmy there. I had to clear myself out. <laughs> Odd. So, talking about the subconscious and the autonomic responses, that means automatic responses the body has to suggestions. Think of a lemon and cutting that lemon into a bunch of little pieces and sticking a piece into your mouth and sucking on that lemon. Mmm. Spiting into it. Maybe you put a little salt on it. I used to do that as a child. And uh, put a little Himalayan salt on that, pink Himalayan salt, and put that lemon in your mouth. And tell me you don't get a little bit of saliva reaction and stuff just thinking if you've ever experienced the lemon, then your saliva is starting to go right now. <laughs> so, and... Uh, and that's just to point out such a simple suggestion like, like hearing about a lemon and, and taking a bite of a lemon and tasting the lemon. So if you apply that in other areas and such, you know, that's where NLP, neuro linguistic programming and such uh, techniques can help you with autonomic responses, responses that you've been having. How do I reach to be more in tune spiritually? I know I have gifts. <clears throat> I'm trying to learn to meditate, but I'm very high strung from my past childhood, and my job is very fast paced. I'm doing my best to learn from. They say I have heart of gold and I'm closely connected to angels. I just don't know how to see messages other than some signs. How do you get there? Yes. So meditation is good, learning to calm yourself. And when you're trying to do that and your mind is busy, I would suggest writing down those things that are coming to your mind as you're trying to kind of clear yourself. Um, incense is good. And when I say incense, uh, more of a clearing kind of set like frankincense resin. Um, and there's other types of resin from like South America that are very similar to frankincense, but in that realm and that family the frankincense and the resin not like the stick you know where he says frankincense on it and it smells like grandma's perfume now i'm talking about real resin you got to get the coals and uh light the coals you actually don't need the whole coal you break this coal break a chunk off because you don't need the whole thing it's a big coal you can actually use that eight times or so <laughs> anyway gonna break you off a chunk of that coal uh, you know, take the frankincense resin, and sometimes it's good to break it up, grind it up, and use a coffee grinder, but be aware that stuff has got a little bit of an oil to it, leaves a bit of residue. So, um, but anyway, you can just get it in chunks. Take the chunk, put it on the coal. Uh, you got myrrh, um, obviously uh, white sage and, and sweet grass, and those kinds of things will help stimulate your spiritual connection. <clears throat> I highly recommend, Deborah, that you get the, the third eye attunement from my wife um, because that'll just blow the doors off for you. <laughs> Serious, it's it's amazing. And there's been a lot of testimonies. If you look on Tony, the Global Healers, uh, on her Facebook, a lot of the testimonies. And uh, it's very effective. And of course, we can do some visual exercise and some, some you know, NLP work. You know, EFT, I would start out with you clearing your field. Um, and we can do that now if you want to do that. You know, the thing is, is, is having a, a starting and a fishing, finishing place, really, when you're, when you're talking about EFT. We can do a general thing. But when you can look back and reflect and see a difference, it, it always helps. So it might be better to wait until you have an emotion or a feeling that we can address specifically with with that <clears throat> but really uh and also some recordings that that are on our page on youtube tony the global healer and there'll be some on uh, the patrick Holmes sozo site too with the, the crystal bowls and uh, do some shofar work uh, vibrational sound therapy can help make that connection for you too and when you're meditating and, and put on, you know, some of Tony's uh, bowl work or um, that, you know, something to really inspire the atmosphere, that high vibration. <laughs> mm -hmm. 
when I first started to meditate, I'd see bright white with purple hue. Nice. Oh, wait, it moved on me. And dark would try to erase light, but light would always win. I grow fresh sage and have crystal galore. I pray the angels daily. Oh, good. It's good to converse the angels. Um, so you, when you say prayer, you know, you're a king, you're a queen. These, these beings are here as servants in some respects, you know, or to help. I don't know, a servant might be, it's not like they're servitude, but they will help. And, and, but to understand that you are divine, you, you know, you are divine. And that's why they are around. You see those things. Yeah, of course, dark always tries to exalt itself when you try to lean into the light. And quite frankly, it just can't exist in the light because light is light. <laughs> so, I mean, there is dark light. Okay, don't don't be naive. You know, there is dark light, <clears throat> warlocks and all that kind of stuff. Very real in this world, unfortunately. But you know, yin yang, whatever. People uh, flexing spiritual. You know, and it's cost some because <laughs> I don't I don't play. I don't need to play. I don't even participate. I don't worry about that. I have beings that take care of that and they are swift and vicious and to the point but i don't even know why i went down i'm not even making this up but deborah if you want to be spiritually connected and you want a fast track you know get with my wife tony the global healer she's got that entombment that will blow your mind It'll open that third eye and and it's, you, you're all third eye is open. You did see the colors. You, you know, and that's good. Just keep doing that. Keep visualizing that. Keep seeing the light and the purple here. Try to control that some. Even use your imagination. Change the purple to red. Change the red to green. Change the green to indigo or metallic something. I don't know. It, there's no wrong way to do it. <laughs> just do it. Be like Nike and just do it. Lean into that. Let your inner child have fun with the meditation time, right? I can't open third eye. No, yes, you can. I disagree. I have extreme intuition. Okay, that's good. And that's part of the pineal, because really the pineal is the gateway. And visually speaking, you may be slightly impaired, but obviously intuitively and that inner knowing and that unction, that feeling, you, you will have quite well, apparently. So I get, I get permission to them. To, oh, yes, of course, for angels. It's good to give them permission. You know, a lot of times we have not because we ask not. So, yes, giving permission, I do the same thing when it comes to that. And, yeah, God didn't give you a spirit of fear. You know, these things are afraid of you actually walking in who you are. <clears throat> I want to say these things, double ugly, whatever you want to call them. And uh, we just don't even, I don't even give them any thought. You know, I do take measures and protection. And I believe in what I do. And I trust in the love that is for me from the universe. And, it's, and I've experienced spiritual attacks and those kinds of things before in the past. And like I said, the, you know, the beings that protect my wife and me are very protective and, and uh, sometimes the results are extreme and uh, you know i hope you, nobody has to deal with that kind of poo poo because it's that's all it is so um <laughs> so, uh, yeah you know you could have a block and we can totally deal with that also um with nlp and eft uh, emotional freedom tapping what time is it we could go through some stuff. You want to try tapping? You want to try an EFT? Like going through something three times, Deborah? An attempt to remove the block. Yes, you are constantly protected. That's what I mean. Don't be afraid. Those things will try to exalt themselves on occasion to try to catch you and uh, catch you off guard. You know, if they can get you to feel a little fear that gives them a little empowerment and then they go from there and they just keep trying to build on that. 
and uh, just don't let them. It says in the Bible, one of the one of my favorite verses: God did not give us a spirit of fear, but of love, power, and a sound mind. That's where we get it. That's what we got. I feel it too. So we're pushing on an hour here. And it's been really nice having Deborah as part of our audience here. And it looks like we have three people on. I don't know who they are there except for Deborah. That's what my hubby says. <laughs> and that's the truth. You are loved, Deborah, and protected. And you can be like a little child when it comes to spiritual things. You know, if you want your third eye open, it's going to open. Um, just keep practicing using visual techniques, seeing the, the lights as you see them. Try to control some of your visions. Um, <clears throat> and you can use words like shalom, a very pregnant word. Shalom, Yahweh, where you breathe in, Yah, exhale. My name is the reason why as a meditation. You can say, Om, So, So. Yeah, I'm not trying to be, it's just, it's, a, <clears throat> it's not my name, it's a title. It's just a vibration. I wanted that vibration as part of my name. So I used it. And I have a very interesting last name, and someday I will tell you all about that. It will make you laugh, probably. <laughs> and that's a good thing. I got things I can't see. Uh, there we go. Okay, I'll be contacting Tony. That would be good. Yeah, contact Tony. She can blow that block right away. We can do some EFT work. Uh, that'd be wonderful. You know what? It's been a beautiful evening, and uh, as I tell my mama, and for those of you who come on and uh, I see this at a later time, I love, I love you. I wish nothing but the best for you. Shalom to you and your family, your loved ones, and remember your past, all that different crap that went down is just fertilizer for your future. Be the change you want to see. All right. I love you guys, man. Hey, share this if you if you want. Let people know. I'll be on probably tomorrow and the next day and the next day and the next day. <laughs> Could happen. I'm excited. I'm having fun. This is good. And, uh, you know, I look forward to the next time. Bye. Let's see if I can do the out today. We're going to experiment a little bit here. <laughs>